Today, folks, we got some big news coming out of Aduro Clean Technologies that I got to share with you. This is one of my high conviction small cap holdings that's been stuck in a trend line since the latter half of 2022, not being able to break out of this. And I still feel like this is a good buying opportunity, a good value play in the small cap realm of things. Not as financial advice. This is currently an unprofitable company that's about to break huge barriers, not only in the plastic industry, but in oil. And let me break this down for you because the Alberta oil sand comprises the world's largest crude oil deposits. The company's operating their pledge to zero emissions by 2050 and Aduro clean tech uh, their pilot stage disruptive upgrading technology can help them get there this is a huge vertical that I don't talk about as often because Aduro is basically going to be one of the first innovators taking waste plastics and turning them into profitable fuels in a way that hasn't really been done just yet in a more efficient manner but this vertical has been largely underappreciated take a listen <laughs> With, when it comes to the bitumen uh, activity, so we've been engaging, it's confidential, the name is confidential, but very large organization already in 2019. They've been waiting for us to build the, the process as we describe it, so the flash room unit and, uh, and the bitumen upgrading unit. And we recently came uh, and engaged a smaller operating in, in Alberta named Prospera, Prospera Energy to which we are catering a dedicated solution for them. Overall, the, the goal is uh, to complete the pro those two projects, to have some data and then move on and present it to the um, energy market in Alberta. Because the energy market in Alberta is 70, 80 years old. They heard and know everything and the proof is in the pudding. So we have enough there to show them something. And beyond that, I think the, the discussion will be, um, you know, um, quite interesting. So as mentioned, when it comes to this kind of upgrading of heavier crude into lighter crude, they're claiming this is a $50 billion vertical. This is a company that already has partnerships uh, with the Shell Game Changer program in the US. It's really trying to tackle these big oil giants and kind of get them to this zero emission target through this kind of, uh, you know, this uh, bitumen upcycling here. But they're also going to be upgrading renewable oils to renewable diesels. These combined verticals are of the largest, even compared to the recycling aspect of it. And what still blows my mind is like some of their competitors that are using um, uh, dissolution like Pure Cycle are trading at way higher multiples, but can't even recycle as many waste plastics. Something that I've been repeating like a broken record because the Kamalasis process they're using stands out in ways that are so profound that we are on the pivotal cusp of seeing this stuff come into play. Because Pure Cycle is trading at a $1.48 billion valuation. And if a Duro can even cap or capture like, you know, it's, it's just getting to the point of them actually people realizing the real potential of this. And again, if you don't want to take on the speculative risk now, you can obviously wait but if this comes into fruition which is only going to take the next year two years this isn't something you're gonna have to wait five or ten years for like a biotechnology company that's in phase trials this stuff is happening right now and nobody is even recognizing the value of it when this snowball starts to roll the compound effect i think is going to be greater than even they're anticipating this isn't some ai hype this isn't something the market has even come close to realizing the potential in this realm of esg the fact that this is a modular uh, basically machine that can be adopted to all these massive conglomerates that are trying to to fight climate change, especially when you're talking about big companies like Procter & Gamble, the companies that just produce the most plastic when it's dumb to give you a plastic cup and a wooden straw. Like They're not really solving any of this when 90% of plastics end up in a landfill, but this can be done on remote islands, industrial waste producers, material recovery facilities, and petrochemical plants, which obviously the petrochemical stuff is going to be massive. And I think they're underestimating even their pro forma here. If we scroll down and just take a quick look, I think they're projecting out what, like 40 something million dollars between licensing and, and some of their own machines and stuff. Uh, you know, come 2026, 2027. Again, this is like a two or three year story. But right now, it's more of a data play. If that data comes into fruition in the next year, scaling this stuff is going to be insane because there's no company that they're talking to. And it's crazy they're even in talks with these massive conglomerates right now. But once they see that data, if it proves out, this is going to be a laughable, easy, like the hard work has been done. They put a decade building this technology out. That's done and over with. Now it's just, you know, proving it. And if they do get it 
to that commercial stage of of resilience this this is done this this is going to be some pretty easy money is my personal opinion again not financial advice and all this data is going to come into these uh you know players they're working with as they announce prospera energy uh you know partnering here uh which is basically a prominent operator in canada's energy industry specializing in the exploration development and production of crude oil and natural gas as publicly traded company prospera is dedicated to acquiring developing and producing resources primarily in western canada leveraging its expertise extensive knowledge uh, prospera focuses on conventional oil and gas uh, reservoirs so again they're going to be trying to leverage this uh, they entered into a letter of intent that outlined a three-phase project engagement plan to investigate develop and evaluate the uh, partial upgrading of bitumen with a pilot plant using the aduro hydrochemolytic uh, upcycling here the bitumen upgrading uh, phase one involves a combined working plan of laboratory and continuous flow um, work using uh, prospera's bitumen and aduro's hct process phase two includes preliminary engineering identification of the pilot plant site and uh, reviewing of licenses and permits as well as a uh, detailed budgeting and agreement proceed with construction phase three includes uh, the procurement fabrication construction commissioning uh, and operation of 50 barrels per day pilot plant with the commissioning of pilot scale continuous flow reactor for hbu in q3 of 2023 parties can now advance phase one of the collaboration uh, this is huge unprecedented news in my opinion and i can't wait uh, to see what data they can pull out of this um, and they also got some more expertise on the board they welcomed karen schultz from brightlands camelot campus we talked about them kind of going to the netherlands and uh you know getting some people researchers to continue uh to facilitate uh you know the expansion of this so if i just click back let me bring this back up here for you guys now she's even going down to visit the facilities which are pretty much in my backyard london ontario to gain firsthand in-depth insight into the significant progress aduro has uh, made operationally uh, but really she understands the unique requirements of the scale-ups focuses on establishing beneficial infrastructure and most importantly uh to foster a collaboration facilitating meaningful exchanges and mutual uh, support among community members uh, this is just my two cents on this company uh, again i just it's a story that i want to continue following and if it's something that you're interested in consider subscribing for updates let me know what you think in the comment section below